Welcome back to Jurassic Evergreen Park and in this episode I will build a habitat for the Stegosaurus with the new amazing 1997 variant. And with that said, hey guys Legion here and welcome back to new Jurassic World Evolution 2 speed build and as I've already said in this episode I will be building for the Stegosaurus and it's going to be like a redwood sort of themed habitat uh, that will basically be the biome, I haven't done that yet in this park and this also uh, this plaza that we will be building uh, in this speed build will sort of be a little area um, with more of those habitats with the redwood biome um, because we also have a tour in this actual habitat and on the right side currently of the tour is this habitat and on the left side I'm going to build another exhibit in the next episode and basically the tour will then go th uh, through two habitats with the same biome and same theme and um, I know I might add another third habitat with that theme uh, also going through um, with the tour. But first I have to talk with you about something quite tragic that happened to me with this build, with this whole park and I haven't actually told you guys that I was I, I, I was planning on doing a community post but I, just, but I just ended up not doing it and I want to talk about this in this episode and that is that I accidentally overwrote the save file for this park um, but as you can see I'm back uh, building in the park and it actually happened to me um, before uh, even uploading the previous episode and um, losing that save file but I already had a backup save file um, usually I always have backup save files for my parks where I, and always when I save them I save in both of those files and then I have two files so if I overwrite one I will still have another file and I can just continue building like nothing ever happened. But the problem is with this that um, I forgot to keep doing that and basically I had one backup save file that was quite a bit older uh, than the regular um, save file I was building in. And that basically meant I was reset with quite a, like I lost quite a lot of process in this whole park. And um, that basically being the Elemosaurus and Pentaceratops habitat from the first episode and the Pyroraptor habitat. So I had to rebuild all of that. Um, also the restaurant. Um, so that was what I did in between episodes. So also there's not going to be a part where I show you what I did in between episodes because I just rebuilt the park. Basically uh, now at this point I have rebuilt most of the path. Uh, all of the infrastructure, uh, some of the buildings and the habitats um, are uh, there, like the fencing is there, but they are just empty and I still need to uh, fill those in in my free time. But uh, for now I just focused on doing this speed build right here. But you know, you learn from mistakes and something wasn't a mistake if you learn something from it, I guess. Um, I mean, I already learned from the mistakes of others actually, uh, that to have a backup file and I always had that. But this is just maybe for a reminder of you guys as well, if you're building a park, always have a backup save file. Because what happened was just that I was starting a new little park build because I wanted to have something to build when I'm not doing a YouTube episode. And then when saving it, I just, you know, uh, out of a reflex because I have built only on this park for such a long time. Um, no, not such a long time, but for a longer time, just out of reflex, I um, saved in that save file and it happened. Um, but you know, now I'm back, um, it's not, not really that bad, uh, luckily I even had a backup file, you know, imagine if I didn't, I literally would have had to stop this park build now, which is, which would have been super sad because I really like how this park is going currently, uh, so yeah, I hope you guys now know that you always have to do backup saves, and yeah, I'm also gonna be doing that from now on with this park. But coming back to that little park build, it's just sort of an escape for me um, when I don't want to build on YouTube and I just feel like playing the game and then I build on that park. So it's progressing quite slowly, but maybe one day I will do a tour of it when, once it's finished, which will take some time, but once it's finished I'll probably do a tour of it. Uh, just like with my tropical park, I still have to record that tour. It's sort of like a task looming in the background for me because um, it's. I think it's going to be quite a lot of editing to do. Um, but but I'll do it eventually um, probably this month probably the next video will be that maybe I don't know yet and um, we're gonna see um, but for now uh, just I'm just happy that I uh, managed to rebuild my park like that I also tried recovering it uh, the safer in steam cloud but that didn't work because there was just weirdly enough no save of it but yeah but now after all that I can finally come back to the actual build right now uh, we're doing what which is supposed to be the focus on the video and no sad news like that like me losing the save file um, so 
And a little special thing about this is a path art, basically. It's already in the thumbnail, the path art. I did like some sort of flower and that was, I would say, probably inspired by the path art submissions from Evolution Square's Battle of the Builders and that Discord. You know, I looked through some of that stuff and I found like some flower things, some things and just had the idea and I really just go went from there and uh, sort of created some design of my own. And you can see that right there. Then later I decorated it with quite some uh, fountains, some of those fountains that had like, have like the four uh, water jets I think in the middle uh, that like go up and I think that makes uh, the whole pattern look a lot better, it's not really that crazy or anything, it's just like three uh, leaves or something like that and uh, they sort of make a really simple shape and then I have like a circle at the top, it's really a simple design. But I think uh, you guys, if you want to do like some path art in your parks and you've never done that before, uh, that's just a really simple design for you to emulate. Um, that, that's really what I would encourage if you want to do path art, just do really simple things like maybe my uh, tropical aviary that was really simple and straightforward. Oh, I just hit my microphone, but uh, that was really simple and straightforward. And it ended up looking really cool and impressing a lot of people with um, how it turned out. So path art is quite simple and um, it can be, be very complicated, but you can do very simple path art and already have it look quite impressive. Also, what I alluded to in the thumbnail is um, the Stegosaurus variant, that being the best variant in the game. And I think that holds to the old um, Stegosaurus variant, the from, one from Jurassic World that we got in the game before and that we had to deal with, with, with for a long time. Of course, we had that one 1997 skin from the Lost World, but that wasn't really, um, you know, it wasn't really a model. It was just like one skin and that didn't really like look that good with the pattern. And now we have some awesome patterns and skins for that model and this makes the Stego a lot better. Um, on my current ranking, it's this, my second favorite um, herbivore in the game, uh, coming after the Dreadnoughtus. And of course, I don't count the Dinocarus as a herbivore in that ranking, I count it as an omnivore. But um, if you count it as an herbivore, as a herbivore, which I would probably do rather than calling uh, it a piscivore, uh, then it would be third, of course, because the Dinocarus is just so good. Um, yeah, I think the best variant in the game should go to this one, maybe. Um, but I think there's one variant that might actually be better or probably is better and that is the Tyranodon variant we also got in the previous update because the Jurassic World Tyranodon just looks so horrible. Uh, the Jurassic World Stegosaurus looks fine, it just has this weird, uh, like the skeleton, skeleton crew described it, uh, crispy looking skin. It doesn't have like, like it has a weird mouth and weird eyes and everything, but uh, the Jurassic World Tyranodon is absolutely horrible. And now that we have that variant, I think my next every aviary build will include the Tyrandon because now it actually looks good and I will actually be using it uh, because before I just didn't. I hated that Jurassic World variant and the only time I ever used it was with the Jurassic Park one. But I think while we're on the topic of um, aviary creatures as well uh, already, I think I can talk about something uh, there and that is the new creatures we could potentially get in some future DLCs with that because it looks like we're just going to be getting uh, some dinosaur packs from now on and maybe we're going to get one expansion for like uh, Chaos Theory or for the new Jurassic World movie which has been announced. If you didn't see that, check out someone's video, maybe Evolution Square or Best in Slots. Um, but um, either we're gonna get a, an expansion for that or a new game, which is something I'm not really sure about if we're gonna get that. Um, but I'm not gonna talk about that now. I'm gonna talk about future DLCs and that one of those um, would be uh, maybe flying species. Um, people are thinking like that we're gonna maybe get a flying species pack, which I think is an interesting take. I personally don't think we're gonna get one because we don't need that many flying species. I think we mostly need like a Microraptor and Archaeopteryx, something like that. We need a Hatsugopteryx probably and we could also get like other end starkets like an Alanka or something. And uh, a Ramphorhynchus is probably request is also requested by the community and some other um, pterosaurs I think similar to Dimorphodon could also be introduced in the game. And I think there could be an aviary DLC. But I think the most important thing is to get uh, for us to get smaller aviaries, um, pretty like small bird cage looking things where we can put the small um, creatures in. For example, the uh, tiny Dermorphodon, uh, the fuzzy one from the Malta expansion, as well as the Jailopterus and a future Archaeopteryx and Micro Raptor because those just wouldn't fit in the huge aviary. And maybe we could even get like a big placeable uh, aviary similar to the one in Jurassic World. I've seen that suggested before by someone. Um, I think that would be really cool 
uh, having that one to be placed down because it would be nice for the big and star kids because they wouldn't look awkward and of course walking animations as well for them because you know um and star kids flying around all the time it just looks weird they need to walk so yeah um i've rambled now quite uh, along for quite a, some time about the aviary creatures even though that's not really the focus of the video um, but anyways, um, the habitat I think it turned out quite nicely, I before didn't really have any idea what to do um, in this area, I just uh, knew I wanted to do a herbivore habitat um, and that I wanted to do a plaza of course, uh, some kind of plaza design and then sort of I had the idea for the path art and that just made it come together as well as the idea for the tour and I finished that. Also um, in front of the tour I added some rock gardens um, in between I don't know, after the recording because that's boring and you know, but you're gonna see that in the cinematics. Uh, anyways, um, speaking of the cinematics, I hope you guys enjoy them. And also, I hope you guys enjoyed this speed build and video. And so, see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. And leave a comment, everything. Subscribe. Um, like, you know how it is. Bye bye.